So we've talked about the 2024 draft class and the 2023 draft class on this channel and how they are performing this NBA season. Let's talk about the 2022 draft class all these players are going into year number three. It's proving to be one of the best draft classes overall in the last five years. And one of the coolest part about this draft class was back on draft night in 2022, we had no idea who was going number one to the Orlando Magic. There were rumors of Jabari Smith Jr. There were rumors of Chad Holmgren. And on draft day, Jabari Smith Jr. was the favorite to go number one overall. And then something switched a couple hours before draft night and Powell Bancaro ended up going number one to the Orlando Magic. And that looked like the right decision. It is unfortunate that Powell's season has been cut short so far he's only played in five games and he may be out for another month but in those five games he was playing like a top 15 player in the nba maybe even a top 10 player and last year powell took the orlando magic to game seven against the Cavs in round number one he was averaging 29 points nine rebounds and five and a half assists shooting 49 percent from the field before he got hurt this year and he truly looked like a top 15 talent in this league and i'm really excited to see how this orlando magic team looks like when he is back fully healthy because they could be a top three team in the eastern conference with the way he was playing to start off the year and the way franz von is playing right now. My number one prospect in this draft class was Chet Holmgren. He ended up going number two to the Oklahoma City Thunder. We know he didn't play a single minute in his rookie season. That was due to an injury that happened before his rookie season started in a pickup game. And then year two was phenomenal. He would have won rookie of the year if there wasn't an alien that was selected number one overall in the 2023 draft. And like Paolo was off to a great start this season, in my opinion, was the defensive player of the year favorite before he suffered a major hip injury and is going to be out for the next month as well. Chet was averaging 16 and a half points on 50% shooting. Last year, he showcased that he could be a four spacing five shooting 37% from three. Well, he shot 37% from three again to start off this year's season. Eight and a half rebounds, two assists. And oh yeah, two and a half blocks tonight as well. He was going to be the anchor to the Oklahoma City Thunder's defense, which is off to a great start this year as well. And I'm really excited to see how Chet looks with Isaiah Hardenstein when they are both fully healthy on the floor at the same time. And we know how good he could be with somebody else we're going to talk about in this draft class in a little bit. The Thunder really just had a generational draft here. But that leaves us to talk about the number three overall pick Jabari Smith Jr. And I did like Jabari a ton coming out of Auburn, but I knew it was going to take a little bit more time for him to develop than Paolo and Chet. But unlike those guys, Jabari hasn't had too much opportunity as a top scoring option on this team. But through 17 games this year, Jabari Smith Jr. is averaging 11 and a half points, six and a half rebounds. He's shooting 42% from the field and 31% from three. And he has been playing better as of late. He got off to an awful start. The shot wasn't falling. The confidence wasn't there. And I felt like he was being phased out as a primary option in this Rockets offense. And he was always going to be someone that was going to take a little bit more time to develop. And he was going to come into himself maybe in the third and fourth year of this rookie contract. Well, at the end of this year, everybody from this draft class is going to be contract extension eligible and I highly doubt he's going to get extended which means next year could be the last year as a rocket who knows if they want to make a trade could Jabari Smith Jr. headline that because what is his ceiling on this team with this dynamic currently they have a lot of young guys he may be the odd man out he's definitely going to be somebody to keep an eye on if the Rockets wanted to make a big trade and he could be one of those young pieces in it I'm a little worried about Keegan Murray as well because he was an older prospect going into this class like Paolo was young he was a freshman same with Chet same with Jabari Smith Jr. Murray was a sophomore coming out of Iowa so a little bit older than those guys and had a great rookie season but he peaked so far with this three-point shot which was his most enticing trait coming out of Iowa in year one in his rookie season he took about six threes a night and shot 41 percent from three finished fifth in rookie of the year voting last year he shot 35 percent from three on the same amount of volume but I thought improved his ability as a defensive playmaker and as an on-ball defender but this year his points have gone down by three per game and it makes sense they did add DeMar DeRozan in the offseason but his three-point shot is now just 30 percent from three on 5.8 attempts a night so it's a career low in volume and a career low in efficiency and his two point percentage is down from last year as well DeMar DeRozan signed a three-year deal DeMonte Sabonis is here De'Aaron Fox is here Keegan Murray is probably going to be the fourth scoring option for the next couple of years and that might not even be true when you got Malik Monk coming off the bench. And I do think he's a good defender. And the Kings definitely need good defenders on this team. So I wonder what his future is going to look like with this iteration of the Kings. We've seen guys take steps offensively after their rookie contracts. And maybe Keegan Murray is going to be that guy. We're seeing Jaden Ivey have the best year of his career. But for when I talked about Jabari Smith Jr., he was off to a little bit of a disappointing start in his first year in the NBA. Well, that was under Steven Silas. And your veteran was Kevin Porter Jr. on that team. It was a disaster. Last year, Jaden Ivey, kind of a similar situation. On Armani Williams, he did a terrible job developing Jaden Ivey. He benched him for Killian Hayes. 
what are we doing? And I think Ivy could definitely be better this season, but he's definitely looking the best we've seen in his career. He's averaging 18 points, four and a half rebounds, 4.3 assists a night, and he's shooting 43% from the field, but he is shooting 35, almost 36% from three on good volume. He's shooting just 47% on two pointers. I think that can go up as well because he can get to the rim, but he just can't finish at times. And it reminds me of like Darius Garland early in his career, or maybe RJ Barrett as well, because I really want to see Ivy blossom in this backcourt with Cade Cunningham and not be an afterthought. I mentioned how good Paolo Bancaro and Chad Holmgren has been, and this guy next is probably up there with them as some of the best players in this draft class this year outside of some guy that didn't go in the top 10. We'll get to him in a little bit, but that's going to be Benedict Matherin of the Indiana Pacers, and you could say he's been the best Pacer this season. Matherin in year number three is averaging 19 points, seven rebounds, and he's shooting 51% from the field, 45% from three, and 83% from the line. He's not a great passer. He's not a great playmaker, but he can get the ball in the hoop, and that's sometimes what you need in this league. He also felt like an afterthought when he went down with an injury last year. Pacers make it to the conference finals without him. Will he be in their future plans or is it going to be Aaron Neesmith, Jairus Walker, and Andrew Nemard? No, it looks like Benedict Matherin should be prioritized over all those three. And one of my favorite players from this draft class, Shaden Sharp, did not play much last year due to injury. And I thought it looked so impressive as a rookie because he didn't really play collegiate basketball at all. He committed way too late to Kentucky because he reclassified, didn't play a single game from them. So he basically went from high school to the NBA. Now he's fully healthy this year, still just 21 years old, and he's looked great out of the gate. He's averaging over 17 points this season, shooting 45% from the field. I would like for the three-point shot to fall a little bit more, because if that could fall down, he could be an easy 20-point per game score very soon, probably before he's 23 years old. Maybe not as good as Shaden Sharp offensively, but he may be the best defender in this draft class, not named Chad Holmgren, and that is Dyson Daniels, the great barrier thief. Dyson Daniels was definitely a raw prospect coming over from Australia to the G League Ignite. They did not do a great job developing him offensively. He goes to the Pelicans, where he was always going to be behind CJ McCollum, Jose Alvarado, and even Devontae Graham in that guard pecking order, but he always showcased what he could be on the defensive end of the floor. He's leading the NBA in steals with over three a night, and he is showing that he could be a long-term fit next to Trey Young in that backcourt, and honestly, maybe the perfect fit next to Trey Young. Man, Jamie Schoen was playing so well before he got hurt, and I think Chris Paul is helping out Jeremy Schoen a ton this year. He looked lost last year as the Spurs were trying to make him a point guard. They did not do him any favors with that. So all in all, this top 10 was pretty good, and it's looking good so far outside of pick number 10. Johnny Davis. I really don't want to go too much into him. We haven't seen a ton of Usman Jang with the Oklahoma City Thunder yet. He was selected 11th overall, but the 12th overall pick, also selected by the Oklahoma City Thunder, top three player in this draft class, Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. Nobody expected him to be this good, maybe outside of Sam Presti. Last year, he was a phenomenal number two scoring option to Shea Gilgis Alexander. And this year, he's been asked to do so much offensively and defensively with all their big man injuries. We saw J-Dub play center for a couple games and was actually holding his own on that end of the floor. He's up to over 21 points this year, over six rebounds, over five assists, over two steals, 51% from the field, 39% from three, and over 80% from the line. I actually think Jalen Williams is the perfect complimentary piece in this league to a number one option like Shea Gotis Alexander, and he's just in year three. I would say Jalen Duren maybe joins Keegan Murray and Jabari Smith Jr. or someone having down years this year. I thought Jalen Duren could have taken some step offensively or some step as a defender, especially in the pick and roll, but I haven't really seen that this year. He's still a great rebounder. He's still a good bruiser inside. I just think he's not living up to the expectations we thought he could take in a year three jump after seeing the year one and year two jump offensively but I just don't know if he could be a really good rim protector in this league but he's still just 21 years old he's the youngest player in this lottery and one of my favorite players from this draft class this season O'Shea Ogbaji turning his career around with the Toronto Raptors it didn't really work out in Utah he gets traded last year at the deadline and this year he's averaging over 12 points four and a half rebounds and shooting over 50 percent from the field and 40 percent from three one of the more disappointing players I think from this class so far not because of play but because he struggles to stay healthy and that is Mark Williams we're never going to see Mark Williams break out if we can never see him play. All right, so I mentioned before that Dyson Daniels could be the best defender in this class, not named Chad Holmgren. Well, I disrespected this next guy, Tari Eason, who could be better than both those guys defensively. He has been an all-defensive first-team caliber defender this year. Maybe in the Rockets' future, more than we could see Jabari Smith Jr. down the line. And Jabari Smith was taken third overall, and Tari Eason was selected 17th overall. And Christian Brown, who was selected outside the top 20, may be the front runner for most improved this season. He's stepping into that KCP role beautifully. And honestly, as some hot 
chops of this game as well. He throws down some really exciting dunks, and you can make an argument that he's been the second best nugget outside of Nikola Jokic, which is funny because he's been playing with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. a ton this year. Walker Kessler still looks like a good value pick at 22. Maybe he didn't live up to those expectations we thought he could reach after his rookie year, but he still looks like a solid rim protector in this league. Maybe Utah isn't the perfect fit for him right now. There's just been a lot of big men maybe crowd on that front court for Walker Kessler, but maybe somebody that gets 10 points and 10 rebounds a night is who he's going to be. That's still a solid player in this league. Nikola Jovic seems like he's having somewhat of a down year for the Miami Heat. He was on my breakout list going into this season, but his three-point shot has dropped, and now I'm questioning if he's going to be a positive shooter in this league. And also one of the best first-round picks, value-wise, Peyton Watson by the Denver Nuggets, selected 30th overall. Shout out to getting Christian Brown and Peyton Watson outside the lottery for the Nuggets here. I mean, Brown contributed to them when they won their title in 2023. Watson is a beast of a defender right now at just 22 years old. And I always find it cool that Peyton Watson is balling out right now for a really good team because he was so bad at UCLA where he averaged three points and three rebounds. Shout out to the Nuggets scouting department for finding something in Watson. The most richest player in this draft class and total money earned over their next contract is actually a second round pick because he hit free agency earlier due to the duration of the rookie contracts. Andrew Nemard, the 31st overall pick, was amazing for the Pacers in the playoffs last year, but he got off to a really bad start this year before getting injured and just did not look like the player whatsoever that we saw go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Boston Celtics in the conference finals and hit a game-winning threes against the New York Knicks in the Eastern Conference semifinals. I think Max Christie of the LA Lakers and Jaden Hardy of the Dallas Mavericks, two players that got extended last offseason as second round picks, have been off to disappointing starts as well. And Vince Williams broke out last year as a second round pick and looked great for Memphis with all their injuries last year, but he has yet to play at the moment I'm recording this year due to an ankle injury. So that is gonna be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. I do feel like this 2022 draft class is balling. Yes, there's some disappointments this season, but there's a lot of top end talent with Paolo, Chet, and J-Dub. Christian Brown may win most improved. Dyson Daniels and Tari Eason could win a defensive player of the year in their futures. So I think this is a very well balanced draft and I think it can age very well in this league. Let me know if you guys enjoyed by dropping a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this draft class in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.